I am honored to be with you today in the seventh International Conference on Multimedia Computing and Systems. I'm one of those people who are so in love with artificial intelligence, and I would love to share this passion with you. My team and I have succeeded in developing many cool applications, ranging from the smartphone, which recognizes your emotional states and reacts to them to support you emotionally, to the app, which recognizes Moroccan dishes and displays the recipe for you and how to cook them using just a photo taken by your smartphone, to the smart chair, which which is capable of continuously monitoring various students' learning performance features, making sense of them and enabling teachers to adapt their pedagogical approach according to their students' immediate needs, to Shama, the prototype of the first 100% Moroccan-made robot, which acts as an assistant, communicating with you, answering your questions, entertaining you, and telling you stupid jokes. <laughs> However, truth to be told, COVID-19 has changed much in me at all levels, including my research directions, with people striving to survive, with many losing their lives or their loved one lives, with the economic crisis, with the social distancing and my fear of hugging even my closest family members. I felt it was time for me to shift from building cool things and direct my efforts towards building tech that really matters, tech that aims at solving real problems and uh, that has direct impact on people's lives. So on this talk, I'll be introducing results from three ongoing projects I'm coordinating and which I believe will have significant impact on people's lives. The first project is a machine learning based crash avoidance system for enhancing traffic road safety. The second project is a decision support tool based on graph networks and reinforcement learning to model COVID-19 propagation and optimize public health policies. And the third is a standard speech correction system using generative adversarial networks known as GANs. Well, uh, before diving into the presentation, into this talk, let me say a few words about myself. My name is Hajar Musannif. I'm a professor of computer science within the Faculty of Science System Lalia, Qadayad University in Marrakesh. I am also a coordinator of a master's program in data science in which I teach statistics, machine learning, and big data analytics. I'm 100% Moroccan made. I'm always very proud to say that. All my studies were in public Moroccan schools. I hold both an engineering degree and a PhD degree in computer science. And I have this big dream of uh, making this world a better place to live. Well, first of all, credit when it's due. I'm only a link within a chain and I'm nothing without my wonderful and brilliant team of students, PhD students and engineers who have been working really hard to bring all of the projects to life and who are supporting me in every way possible and also putting up with my crazy ideas. <laughs> They're more like a second family for me, so I want to thank uh, each one of them. Well, artificial intelligence is reshaping the way human think, operate and live from virtual assistants communicating with humans and offering relevant responses to their queries to data analytics tools and massing torrents of data and using deep learning to sift through this, these torrents of data and recognize patterns, the artificial intelligence field is actually growing at an unprecedented pace. Artificial intelligence allows machine to imitate a form of human intelligence but make, by, by making this machine sense, reason, act and adapt to its environment. When we talk about AI, we also talk about machine learning, which is a subfield of AI consisting of algorithms that can parse data, learn from the data, and then make a determination or prediction about something in the world. Also, talk about deep learning, which is very hot topic nowadays. It provides a very 
flexible, almost universal, learnable framework for representing word, world visual and linguistic information. It also allows performing end-to-end -end learning without the need to manually design features and it naturally outperforms all learning algorithms when fed with a lot of data. So the first project I'll be introducing in this talk is related to smart transportation. It's one of the six projects that were, that were accepted and were that received funding from the Ministry of Transportation here in Morocco. Well, as you already know, road traffic crashes is a major concern worldwide, resulting in great loss of lives and economic damages. In Morocco, the situation is very uh, critical and the statistics are really alarming with thousands of fatalities reported every year. So road accidents are really devastating to the Moroccan economy uh, as they cause an estimated 2.5 loss uh, gross domestic product. Well, there are many uh, causes of road crashes, but the human factor is responsible for more than 85% of road accidents, while factors related to infrastructure, traffic, volume, uh, weather conditions, vehicle characteristics, and mechanical conditions do not exceed 50%. Well, first, we started by proposing a framework which helps in gaining insight about the mechanisms influencing driving behavior and investigating a set of parameters needed for estimation of that driving behavior. So the framework basically consists of three major modules, the driver, the vehicle, and the environment. The driver basically performs a set of actions on the vehicle commands and controls and makes decisions based on the perceived environment. The driver's module, for example, has been developed taking into account many parameters such as physiological characteristics, driving events, but also driver input to the vehicle such as the way the driver steers or the way the driver brakes. And also behavioral based measures were performed using image processing techniques by observing the driver's uh, facial expressions. Well, after establishing the driving behavior framework, we developed a real-time crash prediction system and, 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 and tried to understand under which circumstances road crashes occur and which factors lead to the likelihood of a car accident. In our project, studies were carried out using a driving simulator which is located at Qadayad University in Marrakesh and the goal was to produce a driving environment that fairly resembles a one that subjects would encounter in their daily conducts. So a total of uh, 53 volunteers participated in the first exper experiment. The volunteers were aged between 20 and 26 and all the subjects had a full, of course, driving license and had been driving for at least a year. Average years of driving experience ranged from um, 1 to 17 years. And each participant navigated an experimental session, drives on a virtual two-lane urban uh, road. The driving scenario actually was performed in daylight and under five different weather conditions, clear, overcast, uh, fog, rain, and snow. And the collected, uh, the collected data resulted in a data set that included 93% of non-crash samples and only 7% of uh, crash instances. Of course, a thorough and comprehensive data screening that included cleaning the data, checking for consistency was executed just to secure the data operability and validity for the analysis. Now, one of the research challenges we had to handle while uh, dealing with, with this collected data is the problem of um, class imbalance. What we mean by a class imbalance uh, is that crash-related observations uh, usually produce imbalanced data sets since the target classes are not equally represented. And of course, this can lead to a bias toward the majority class, given them that modeling classifiers prioritize the class with the higher number of observations, causing an over-prediction of this class. 
So to address this uh, problem of class imbalance, we used a method called the synthetic minority oversampling techniques, or also referred to as SMOT. SMOT creates uh, synthetic minority instances uh, between existing minority cases rather than, rather than duplicating existing minority cases. So the technique basically finds the key nearest neighbors of each minority case. It then um, one neighbor is randomly chosen from the key nearest neighbor and then the difference between the instance in process and its neighbor is computed. And lastly, the new synthetic instance our instances are included in the data set and appointed to the minority class. So the idea of SMOT is that it oversamples the minority class without any data duplication and it prevents uh, overfitting. Reducing the dimensionality of the input variables through variable selection is also an important step for classification models as some of the the features may correlate with each other or not have any considerable effects on crash occurrence. So we used here random forest for this task. Random forest is a machine learning method that consists of an ensemble of randomized classification and uh, regression trees. In the, in the random forest model, we adopted the measure based on the Gini index to evaluate the variable importance and to decide what variables to keep and what variables to exclude. So after this step, a total of 35 variables were reduced to only 13 by this selection process. We tested many machine learning algorithms on the collected data and multi-layer perceptron and super vector machine were the algorithms that yielded the best results when comparing the recall and precision me measures with an average performance of over 94 percent. So the average performance uh, measures for MLP and SVM compared with three other adopted models naive Bayes, hidden Markov model as well as logistic regression are depicted on this figure on the right. So on this same project, we also implemented a new machine learning fusion framework for collision avoidance systems. And to the best of our knowledge, this work presents the first attempt at establishing a fusing framework on the basis of data from vehicle kinematics, driver inputs, weather conditions, and physiological signals while accounting for class imbalance. So the abstract overview of the proposed uh, fusion framework is uh, on the left and the comprehensive illustration of the proposed fusion framework is on the right. Feature selection was applied on four types of classifiers, KNN, SVM, MLP and bias learning. And once we found the best tuning parameters for every model, we created different combinations using the base classifiers and then using different fusion methods every time to obtain the best results, just like we do in stacking. And the models are trained on the redressed training fold afterwards. Then the final uh, performance of a classifier corresponds simply to the average over the cross-validation iterations. And for each group of classifiers, the F1 score and the G-mean metrics were computed. And if they are higher than 80%, the corresponding set is picked. If not, it will be taken away from the set of learners. And the selected set, which means those with um, 80%, are then fused with resampling, bagging, boosting, which gave higher results. So this table here summarizes the grouping and definitions for all the features acquired during the driving simulations which were large scale with over 100 volunteers in this second experiment. So four categories of features are included, the vehicle kinematics, the driver input, the environmental conditions, and the physiological signal. The result, the result revealed that although some of the algorithms did not individually display a high score, they could still achieve an adequate level of performance in an ensemble model. So on this stage, two resampling techniques, bagging and boosting, and other boost, sorry, are uh, conducted separately for each selected set of learners. And the final results for crash predictions are obtained. The highest prediction uh, performance exceeded 93% and was achieved by KNN SVM 
bias net bias networks and naive base with MLP as the fusion algorithm and Adaboost as the resampling technique. You can find uh, more details about our work in the published research articles here on this slide and which we are very very proud of since the journal in which journals in which we published are really high um, impact have high impact uh, factor and we are really proud of this work. So the second project I'll be introducing is a decision support tool based on graph analysis and reinforcement learning to model COVID-19 propagation and optimize uh, public health policies. As of 19th September uh, 2020, COVID-19 has generated over 30 million confirmed cases and 900 deaths with unprecedented uh, damages to the global economy. The idea of this work is to leverage AI to help determine the precise timing, how long and the intensity, how strict a public health measure such as lockdown, travel restriction, test and isolate, etc. should be applied. So to achieve this, we used we use reinforcement learning and in a reinforcement, reinforcement learning setup, an agent, which is the AI model, is interacting with an environment, which is a changing process, with a goal to maximize uh, a reward. Uh, and reinforcement, re reinforcement learning setup is mainly composed of four components, the states, the actions, the model, or the environment, and the reward. In our case, defining a set of states uh, wasn't obvious. We had to conduct a separate study where we tried to extract the most important parameters influencing the propagation of COVID-19. We implemented a set of simulation models for the city of Casablanca, being, being because Casablanca is the most populated and impacted by the current pandemic here in Morocco. We divided the city into eight uh, districts and studied each one of them separately with respect to its uh, demographics. We identified three parameters as the most important ones to model COVID-19. The transmission rate, which is proportional to the city's demographics, density, movement, and connectedness. The second parameter is the identification rate, which is proportional to the incubation period and the testing rate. So a disease with longer incubation period won't manifest until the infected person has infected other people. Hence the importance of testing, which can increase the identification rate. And the third parameter is the death rate, which is proportional to the healthcare capacity and the proportion of vulnerable people among patients. So using the previously explained parameters, we uh, constructed a general model using a flow network that can be used to simulate any infectious disease, not only COVID-19, and in any given uh, region's demographics. So region has N, capital N, normal population, will get in contact with an initial number of current infected, noted here in, 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 in this uh, figure, and it will generate A times N amount of new infected people. The newly infected people will either be known carriers, key, or unknown carriers, U, and the unknown carriers, U, which means those that didn't show any symptoms, will represent exactly the current infected people again for the next run, while the known carriers, which means those that showed symptoms or being tested and hospitalized, will either die or recover depending on the parameter uh, C, which is the death rate. Now, the defined, now that the defined the states, the defined states represent the input vector for the AI agents, whose role is to generate optimal measures given the input states. So by optimal, we mean the precise timing and the intensity of each measure. So here we have six conventional measures or actions, 
Action one is travel restriction. Action two is lockdown. Action three is distance and work, distance work and study. Action four, use barriers. Action five, increase the test rate. And of course, we can add as many actions as we want. Uh, in order to incrementally improve the agent's performance towards the desired trade-off, we define the reward function using this uh, form formula you see here, defining the economic score and the health score and the reward. And the developed agent is simply a multi-output regressor with a multi-layer perceptron as uh, estimator. We trained uh, the developed agent in an online incremental fashion against uh, 20,000 different demographics and disease parameters, where it was stabilized in a success rate of about 70% of the cases as illustrated in this figure here. So this work shows that reinforcement learning paradigm can be used to learn optimal public health policies in complex epidemiological models, especially when new epidemics show and that we progressively discover new things about their uh, dynamics. Well, the last project I'll be introducing in this talk is an adversarial stuttered speech autocorrection and generation system. This project hasn't been funded by any instance yet, but it's a project I'm um, connected to on the human level. I was actually honored to be a reviewer of a PhD thesis uh, of a very special person who defended her PhD this year despite her handicap. So let me introduce Latifa Raji, and you'll get a better idea of what I'm talking about. I remember I couldn't sleep that day wondering what, I, what can I do and what can technology do to help her. So, the idea of this project is to convert the stuttered or the disfluence, disfluences in speech to a fluent version of the speech so, so that Latifa can only speak through some device and the device would output a corrected version of her speech. Uh, stuttering is one of those uh, disfluences and it only introduces difficulties of expression which manifest usually in repetition of syllables or words, interjection, prolongation, silent pauses, etc. And this stammering or stuttering include um, around 70 million people in the world. So to attain the mapping that can transform stuttered speech to a fluent version, we have recorded and collected speech data of stuttered speech and their corresponding fluent speech. The speech in our data set includes many speakers with, with different languages, including English, French, and also Darija. Those speech samples were later pre-processed which means sampled and converted to spectrograms to extract features that contain intensity information of time varying spectrum. In this project, we use a new sophisticated version of uh, GAN called Conditional Generative Adversarial Network, which also noted as CGAN. So, Generative Adversarial Networks, or GAN, is one of the powerful types of neural network architectures for generative modeling. In the GAN architecture, two models stand together in an adversarial way. There is a generator which tries to generate samples that look like real-world data, and we have a discriminator which tries to distinguish between the real data and the data generated by the generator. So in our CGAN architecture, we combine two neural network architectures, recur recurrent neural network, RNN, and a convol convolutional neural network, CNN. Our GAN is composed of one generator G and one discriminator D, where G is the, 
where uh, sorry where G has an encoder uh, decoder architecture where the encoder is a bidirectional recurrent neural network RNN while the decoder is a convolutional neural network CNN with a UNet architecture we also control the output with an additional objective by using a nil one loss between generated features and features extracted from fluent speech and here is the result This is the This is the normal one. And this is the one generated by our architecture. Where the, the filter bank is is based on the, the behavior of the the, the basilar membrane. Where the filter bank is based on the behavior of the basilar membrane. Where the filter bank is based on the behavior of the basilar membrane. Well, you, you suggests can... a potential. This section can... formalizes can... and suggests. Well, you see, you get the idea behind this is that we correct stuttered speech and we transform it and we generate um, a corrected version of it using CGAN. Well, of course, there is a lot of room for improvement and we need more volunteers and more stuttered speech data. We also hope that this project gets funding too so we can, you know, do more for the people suffering from such speech disorders, not only stuttering, but also other type, types of speech disorder. To conclude this talk, I just want to say that no matter how smart we are, how many accomplishments we make, how far will technology advance, we will only be remembered for the impact we leave behind and for the joy we bring into people's lives. Thank you.